Okay. Well, Hello. so, Hi. oh, no. okay. So, uh, so we're, we're here in Helsinki at the, uh, Helsinki education pub. And, uh, this is the, uh, the, the presentation room. We just finished three really incredible, incredible days. And, um, so I thought it'd be, it'd be cool to have Tammy and I to, um, just discuss what, what happened and how it, how it affected us. So uh, maybe a brief introduction. So, okay. So I, good morning. I'm Tammy Schrader. I work at uh, Northeast Washington ESD 101 at an education service district in Washington state, serving the Eastern North Eastern side of the state in science and computer science. And I came because Mitch kindly invited me and I have a lot of work invested in game-based education. And I was just excited to come see the finished schools. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. It was, it was so, so cool. And my name is Mitch Weisberg and uh, I'm involved in uh, working with education organizations and uh, developing courses to uh, teach people how to think and uh, helping teachers learn how to use technology. And I just thought that this would be um, a really cool thing to do to get people from really all over the world to come and share their own education pra practices at the same time that uh, they're, they're learning about the Finnish practices. So we had, what, there were about 10, 12 of us 13 of us. 13 yeah, of us? Yeah, I remember because we kept counting the 13. Right, okay. okay. Uh, um, Make sure we were all together. And which is hard because I only have 10 fingers. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so we were from, so Tammy and I rose from, from the US. We, we had uh, Bron Stuckey from Australia. Um, we had Vrishali from India. We had uh, Marco and Celestino from Portugal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Angie was from the U.S. We had uh, Stephen okay. from Scotland. Stephen from Scotland. Sarah. Uh, Sarah was is from yeah. the U.S. and um, and a few people from Finland as well. Yeah. So um, so I thought you know we might as well go through like what we learned day by day. We should day. probably mention Senator Wellman from Washington. Oh my State. gosh, who was and she? Um, she's head of the Education Committee in Washington State. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's and then right. her. Um, and then. Her also, person the person, her, yeah. the chief legal person yeah. um, involved with education and writing the laws about education for the state yeah. of Washington, yeah, Heather. Heather. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that kind of rounds out who we were. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Yeah, it just occurred to me. I wasn't the only person from Washington State coming. Right. Yeah. Um, and so the first day we got to visit two different schools. Uh, one school uh, was in a... Um, I, I guess for Finland, a lower socioeconomic area, and it was a school, the school itself was 20 to 30 years old. And then the second school was a brand new school um, in Helsinki also. Um, and it, it was just fascinating seeing the contrast between the schools and also the similarities. So what did you, what did you, you know? You know, well, first of all, it's very uh, intoxicating to be in Helsinki because you know, I've read a lot about Finnish schools. And one of the reasons we talked about wanting to come to Finland for me was I, I just want my eyes and ears and hands in it, right? I wanna, I wanna get a feel for it. And um, so the first school we walked into, they were doing robotics. We walked into what in the United States I would typically call, um, well, they call them consumer science classes now, but a home ec class. And the kids had just burnt their blueberry pie what they call pie which and my first thought was oh culturally this is so it's so lovely because i would have called it a cobbler but it, it just right. and what i loved about it was kids are the same everywhere kids are, they burnt it and they're like how oh, we burned it oh my god it was delicious <laughs> and then they had ice cream there that was rectangular and, and i know that sounds silly but it was so fun to have similarities and differences and things to talk about around you know what was fun and what was so it's this group of three boys and they were like how ah, we burnt it but you can try it. It, they were just lovely humans and it was really um welcoming the principal met us at the door um the vice principal anyway they were just so accommodating and so lovely as they showed us around the buildings the one thing i noticed you know is the buildings in both cases are just open spaces almost like even the school Even, that was yes, like 25, 30 years old. Was welcoming. It's just this big space where 
people can gather. And then I noticed there were nooks and crannies um, for smaller groups to everywhere, like everywhere mm -hmm. we went. And kids were just wandering yes. around. And kids were just, you could tell they felt very comfortable moving in the space. I had one young lady stop me and um, because I was looking in that room, I remember you were standing there and, and she looked at me, she said, do you have a question? And it was just this young student. And I said, is that the library? Cause it looks so small. And she said, it is. And I, I think she could tell what I was thinking because she said, it has a second floor. And I said, oh, thank you. Like I didn't, I would not have known that. And she was just, and then she's like, is there any other question? And she doesn't know me from me. And, and, and English and isn't her first language either. English is not her first language. And she, um, and she's in third grade. Yeah, and she was busy just kind of talking to me about what she loves about school. And I love that recess is a very prominent thing in all the schools. Like, what did they say? Every hour. Every hour. Every hour. Every there's hour. 10, 10 or 15 minutes of recess. Yeah, and there's got to be some... Do I, Mitch, is there any research around getting up and moving? And anyway... Um, a little. It was, Yeah, a little. <laughs> and then when we went to the classroom, well, first of all, the guitar classroom... You know, I got to talk to some of those students and they're singing a song and playing a song and, and it was just so welcoming. It, it was just so, everything is so welcoming. And yes, I know they, they were there, but I ha you can just get a sense of that is right. happening all the time. Um, that last room we went to where kids work on projects of their choice. And here, here was my favorite takeaway from that class. In fact, I'm still um, in awe of this where they buy micro bits in this one, student wanted to make a project around smart clothing you know where you right. can anyway and i said i've taken micro bit trainings how did you how did you manage that because it's it, micro bits are not i don't think they're um intuitive intuitive thank you for that word and he said oh you know we as teachers looked at this and thought well we better bring the kids to the pd with us so that they can and i thought why, why aren't we taking students to professional right, the teachers had taken the a student. one week mm -hmm. i guess uh, course of yep. professional development around yep. coding of micro bits and instead of just the teachers going there were four or five teachers and there were five or six kids yep. and they went together to learn Isn't to learn crazy? together I, I just i thought you now there's a concept anyway um and what i loved is all the projects that the kids developed and they're not um hey, and I'm not negating any project anybody's ever done, but it's not just make a diorama of what an ecosystem looks like. It's like, you know, we need air conditioning in a home. Can you, I mean, they had a whole, was it a whole city where they had lights coming on? They built a, a, a miniature of, of a city. <laughs> and, and, and they had to put all the wires down for the lights. Right. And they remember him saying, yeah, that was a lot of wires. The kids were like, this is a lot. Of, and can you imagine... That's a real world learning experience. Right. And they're trying to, to figure out the difference in electricity mm -hmm. used between using, let's say, LED lights and, and yes. incandescent lights. Yes. And these are fourth and fifth graders who are coming up with a project and building a mock city and then wiring it and then measuring the amount of electricity yeah. that's Isn't used. Isn't amazing? I, anyway, all the real world applications that these kids are doing is just... Um, I, I just found that. How about what? What were your impressions? I'm sorry. So, I'm so you, know. you know, you walk into the school and you see the students, and it's not like teachers are saying, "Okay, now we're going to learn times tables. Now mm -hmm. we're going to learn addition." It's it's um, the the kids understand that they have a project. The, the teachers understand that they're going to use that project in order to teach the kid in order for the kids to learn. So the teachers aren't necessarily teaching the well they're not really teaching the content except if, if, a, if a student asks them but they're they're kind of prodding the students and coaching the students so that they're learning the academics on their own while they're solving problems that interest them in the ways that they want so that you might get three kids who basically three fourth graders who walk out of the classroom into a nook in a in, in the school and just spend an hour and a half solving a problem on their own and then an hour and a half later they'll come back into the in, into the classroom so you they, you're giving kids an awful lot of auto autonomy and um and there weren't behavioral problems there weren't you know kids taking advantage of it because as the teacher said the kids know that if they um if they're not responsible that those privileges are going to be taken away yeah. from them there was a t word them. that kept getting thrown all the way through this whole week trust trust it's we trust our teachers Right. Teachers aren't getting evaluated at all, which, I mean, at all. Um, every teacher has a master's degree. And they and the way they were collaborating, 
collaboration isn't forced, but they did it in what they called phenomena based. Right. Where like, okay, this unit, we're going to work on safety and whatever safety that means. That could mean cyber safety. That could mean, you know, safety in walking down the street. That could mean what signs mean. It, I mean, safety. Like, right. Can you imagine encompassing a whole unit on safety? The kids could do anything with that. They could say, I yep. want to, I want to know how to stay safe on the computer, or I want to know how to stay safe when I'm walking down the street and reading street signs, or I want to, I mean, oh my gosh, safety could mean I want to build armor because, uh, um, you know, I, if I run into something, I bruise easily or, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just was, it was really empowering. It was empowering for students. It was empowering for teachers. And can you imagine being an administrator in that? Re in right. That? Well, the administrators are just, they, yeah. lo they love what they were doing. I know. The teachers love what they were doing. I know. The kids were doing the things that they loved and they were all working together and trust and... Um, yeah, they had those little, those, in the new those, building, remember yeah. those little spaces? Yeah. And yeah. the kids were just going there. And I said, they just go there and, and, and the administration said, yeah, they know that if, if they really break that trust, then that privilege is gone. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then the other thing that interested me is the uh, the second school that we went to, which was the new school mm -hmm. in a more affluent area. You could one could say, well, of course they're able to do it because they started the school with the idea of of you know phenomena or problem based mm -hmm. learning, and they built the school for that issue. They hired the teachers. Teachers had to want to teach in that fashion so they could start from scratch and slowly build over three years to build out the school from first through eighth or ninth grade. The second school, or the first school that we went to, was a school that was already there and was, and was teaching more traditionally. And when Finland changed their curriculum, the more problem-based curriculum seven or eight years ago, the school had to, the leadership of the school had to figure out how to take teachers who were used to teaching in a, in a certain fashion with the school that was built based on teaching within that fashion, change everything, keeping basically the same teachers in a lower social economic community. And you could walk into that school and you, you know, the, um, the feeling of trust, the feeling of learning, the, the joy of learning was immediately palpable in that school just as much as it was in the other school. Oh yeah, so. and very low turnover. I asked both the administrators, mm -hmm. how much turnover do you see? Very little. Teachers are very uh, content and right. happy to be in a system. And I, I loved when we walked into one of the rooms at the second school, and it really doesn't matter. You can tell they collaborate well together. <coughs> but you walk in and all these teachers are sitting around and they're talking, and, and it's just this free flow of ideas. Um, and you know, not one time did I hear, well, how are we going to assess this? What's the assessment look like? Right. Right. I mean, it was just like, what does the learning look like? And how can we empower students? It, it was, the, and you could tell it was at the base. Yep. The, whole, the base conversation right. of everything. Yeah. So then the second day, uh, we were back in this space that, and you can, um, you know, this is a 360 video, so you can go through and you can see what the space was and imagine that there were, um, 13 of us and probably um, 20 other people in the room <laughs> yes. and uh, we met with people from the central government of Finland uh, the including from the uh, Department or the Ministry of Education um, people from um, the education uh, I guess education department uh, within the city of Helsinki um, the people from this hub describing what they were interested, what they were doing with this hub. And then, um, and so we were hearing what, you know, what the conceptually Finland is, it, it wants to do with education and Helsinki wants to do with education. Yeah. And then had the opportunity to meet a group of ed tech companies that are being fostered in, in, um, in this hub. So how did that change or what else would, did we guess did we get? You think from from the morning session with this, the administrative piece? People? One of the biggest things I got is, and I did get this the first day too, when we asked about when the number of students outgrows the building, the government just builds them a new. Like they're not counting on; they don't have to worry about money from levies or buildings or bonds. 
they just, the government steps in and builds them a building or finds them a space to be. And, and the government is very much involved in making sure the schools have what they need. And that, and there's, and there was a shift. It wasn't, we're going to control you. It was a, we're going to make sure you have what you need. Right. Right. We're going to make sure you have buildings and facilities and, you know, enough ed, ed tech. Mm -hmm. And, and when you work in a space like that, I guess I've never worked in a space like that, but I can imagine the education is more equitable. So in my life, when I was busy writing grants to get equipment, if, if somebody had come in and gave everybody the equipment we felt we needed to do the job, including cameras and microphones and whatever, right? And we had budgets to make sure that every kid, when they do those projects, have what they need. Mm -hmm. That's a much more open, and again, the people you're referring to, they all said the word trust. It was almost like a through line. We trust the schools to do what they're supposed to do, and here we go. And they said, you know, like you, you, you think about their goals. You know, they're from the very beginning. They, you know, we think of this that we're taking children and we're preparing them to be adults, mm -hmm. and uh, we want them to be fulfilled adults. We want them to be members of society. We want them to be able to have jobs. We want them to be able to have families. And our whole focus of school is as a major part of that to to build them into adults. And on a daily basis, if if we can walk into a school and we see smiling eyes of the students and we see smiling eyes of the teachers, we know we're doing something right. That's how we measure education. Yeah, it was, yeah, absolutely. It was all focused on students and not in a, you know how you say, oh, I'm going to check that box, I'm focusing on students. No, it was really all about students, all about students and, and having them you know, I, I didn't see a big push, and, and they do promote universities and right. vocational skills, but most, more importantly, they they promote students mm -hmm. and their learning and how to help them become, have the life they want. There was a saying, and I don't remember what it was, but it was right. It, it was wonderful. And um, and teaching, you know, having students develop the ability of learning how to learn. Exactly. So they can then take control yeah. over their learning, and the teacher is just is 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 there to coach them. I shouldn't say just yeah. the teacher is there to coach them, um, and help them bring out the best in themselves. Exactly. Yeah. And then and and that came through from the people from the uh, the Ministry of Education, uh, from the you know there's an ambassador from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs talking about you know education is really Finland's brand. There was uh, there was the vice mayor assistant mayor for the city of Helsinki. Um, and then this ed tech hub that we're in is built in to foster relationships between um, companies that can provide materials, um, you know, equipment, games, software, textbooks, whatever that schools need. Uh, relationships between those companies with the schools, with the teachers, and with the researchers so that when, um, when something is developed for education, all the parties involved are also involved in the development and the testing of, of that product so that it fits in with the way schools want to use it. Yeah, it was amazing. And then, um, and then the third day, um, why don't you, you know, I would I just describe the first two days. Do you want to just describe what we did the third uh, day? Okay, and thank you for helping me with the names of the organization. The first, the third day we went to Hamke, Hamke, H-A-M-K, H-A-M-K, sorry, Hamke, and they are a, an applied, a University of Applied Science, University of Applied Science, and they work with what I, in, in America, we call pre-service teachers, right? Right, and well, and well, also, and they have other, other programs, right. but that was obviously the one I was interested in most. Right, and they, they, I mean, so, so with Applied Science, you know, they're also engineering, they, they have different schools, they're doing they're research. constantly, like it's not a done deal. It's they're looking at research and development, how to do it better, how to how to build better teams. Again, the word trust kept getting yep. thrown. Um, oh, something beeped. Are we still on? Okay. And then we went to what was the name of the second place? Hami H A M I. H A M I, where they were doing a lot of research and development, and they were using AR VR, and <clears throat> we got to practice around actually technical vocational what I would right. call vocational skills yep, yep. where I got to um, put on a headset and play with how to 
um, drain oil out of a pneumatic device or and it, it was just I don't quite know all the details but you know and you learn how to use tools and you know this that it, it was just it was um, and and how that worked and those people were building things for uh, it was a vocational right. school right right well um, they are a vocational school and right. they and they build a lot of their own materials yeah um, both in uh, yeah. virtual reality um, and you know yeah. all their, their and then their we, we yeah didn't we we went up and we got to um, well the senator I think put on the headset and then we right. all got to look at the forest and they talked about um, the economy and they talked about real world jobs in in northern Finland which was forests right Forestry, what, how many right. I can't even remember how many private owners there are in well so it's so crazy. in Finland it's the forests number. are predominantly owned by private individuals yes Finland has a population of five and a half million, I believe. Yeah. There's 600,000 owners of forest. Oh so you just, you know, that's rough, that's 10% of the country owns forests as part of their income yeah. generation. And so they, they did this VR thing. And what was really great is, um, again, one person has the headset on, so we don't all have headsets on, but you have this huge screen and everybody, and I think the center was trying to saw logs. Well, she did saw logs successfully. Yeah, she did. Well, she, she did. And, but she, you could look around and everything she was seeing, you could see on the screen and she's sawing things. And she, at some point you look over and there was a deer in the, in the, in the distance. And it was just very powerful uh, to watch how one person could have a headset on, but everybody could participate. Right. right? And even she was communicating a lot while she had this headset on about, um, I'm finding this, I'm seeing, you know, I mean, how do I, you know, how do I turn the saw on? What do I, it was just this, I, I just thought it was all collaborative. And, and the virtual reality part of it was only supposed to be, you know, is part of the learning. Right, it is. So for example, um, when you're, when you're sawing a log in virtual reality, you don't feel mm -hmm. the saw hitting the wood. But as the Senator was saying, well, you know, I would expect normally when I'm sawing to, to feel the saw hitting the wood as you know as right. you pointed out yeah. the job of the teacher then is then say well let's let's take let's for a minute let's talk about you know friction and physics and why that is and how that's different in virtual reality so the idea is that you're using the virtual reality as a trigger to build in the both the academic and the mm -hmm. and the and the, the vocational science knowledge. content and even like when I looked around, I thought this would be a great um, way to build in even the social studies concepts, right. like what you were talking about. How what percentage of our population actually owns forests, and the social aspect of that? Because my first thought, and I don't mean to be negative, um, but my first thought was. I can't even imagine that in working in the United States where we have this, like, you know, cause we have governments that mm -hmm. come in and control our forests and preserve our land, which I'm ever so grateful for. Right. And I thought, can you imagine, um, I mean, if you and I had bordering property and you believe one way of sustainability and I'm trying to sustain a forest in a new way. And you know, I mean, I can't imagine that working in our American system it, it, at all. Well, not unless we have an attitude adjustment. And well, that's the big thing. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. And, but that would be a great right. opportunity to have yep. those conversations about why why does this work in Finland? Mm -hmm. Would it work in your culture, or would it, and why and why not? Right. And and how do you build that system? Right. Mm -hmm. So. And and the the bringing the idea of cooperation. So when a university, you know, well, first of all, within the university, you have the School of Engineering working together with the computer scientists, working together with the Department of Education, working together with the Department of Research. It almost seems seamless. You're right, and they're yeah. all working together to make sure that products work. And then you have the university working with other universities around Finland so that what they develop can be used by other universities also. And then they're working with the vocational schools, the high schools, the middle schools, and the elementary schools to make sure that what they're developing meets the needs of the teachers, the students, and the administrators of those schools. So this, this attitude of collaboration um, to make sure that what you're developing and what you're doing is meeting a genuine societal need in a way that satisfies the needs of everybody was just, was. Um, I think we were all like blown away by it. Yeah. Because how many yeah. how many times in the U.S. do we try to, do, you know, a university develops something, 
how many times does that then go out and benefit the entire community? How many times does a university in the U.S. start developing something and then go out and say, well, let me see if this is actually going to you know, really work in the classroom and start working with, with a variety of different schools and meeting the needs of, of, of uh, the accessibility needs and the, um, you know, the special needs of, of different students and, and how the teachers want to teach. We, we, we don't necessarily think of problems like that. And you know what I thought was powerful when I think about what we're focusing on in Washington State around DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I think about the system that they're building here it speaks to all of those mm -hmm. without it having to call them out. Although, I mean, you could call them out and, you know, but I think about what they're building here, you know, every kid has access with what we know about, you know, UDL, um, the Universal Design right. for Learning and how all kids need to have access and they all need, I just, I, I, I was blown away. It was, I mean, it's powerful, right? Right. And it's an equity issue and an inclusion right. issue and a diversity issue. Right. And then the third group that we went to was a, was a, uh, a vocational school uh, called Kipula. Mm -hmm. And Kipula is a vocational school for special education students. Yeah. And these, and the students are learning things, you know, like car repair, food, uh, gardening, animal, animal mm -hmm. husbandry, um, how many forestry. agriculture? How I mean, how many greenhouses were on that side? Oh yeah, that, it was. You know, and they're trying to grow tomatoes, right? And grow well, grow. Uh, you know, everything. Like, oh, everything. Yeah. And and we were actually shown the facilities by special education students. Oh, that was my favorite part. Yeah, students greeted us and showed us around, and then they participated in whatever we were doing. And their results are incredible. You know, their uh, special education students are going there for two, three, four years, and roughly fifty percent of the students are getting jobs immediately upon graduation, mm -hmm. and another twenty-five percent are getting jobs within a few months. Mm -hmm. um, Amazing, isn't it? Yes. And you know what I thought was really incredible when I talked to the kids. Um, not that I don't love talking to adults, but kids are you know what we're all in here. but to talk to those kids they were so clear about what they wanted to do and not you know it wasn't i want to be a fireman i want to be a policeman i want to be a doctor i mean it wasn't like the pat answer it was like you know what i want to work in hospitality but i think specifically in a cafeteria right or, in, or, or as wait staff or as and and when we pushed him on that it, it was like what about that and he's like you know what i know about my person is that you know, I'm a people person, I'm an ex, and I thought, I wish I could get every kid talking like that. Here are my strengths. <coughs> At no time did he say, well, I just don't think I could be a programmer. At, it was always, you know what, I'm a people person, I know that I need to be around people, and one of the ways that I feel like I can contribute to the greater good is by serving in this capacity. And mm -hmm. I thought, don't we wish every kid were talking, right. I wish every adult were talking like that, but, um, I, I just thought, and one of the things, I don't know, you, yes, you were in the room. When the little, well, she was 16, she goes in and they said, hey, we've got this culinary thing. Would you just try it out? And she'd never had an Oculus set on. Right. She'd never done virtual reality. Yeah, I'll do it. I mean, there was no, you know, as a seventh grade teacher, when I would get kids to try new things, they were like, oh, I don't want to look foolish. I don't want to. The amount of trust, I mean, I know I heard that word all the time. But the amount of trust was, no, she got it. She, it was, they would just want her to try it. And she puts it on, and what I loved about her experience was, she talked through the whole thing, so you knew what she was thinking because she was talking. Nobody told her to do that, nobody, she just said, well, this is kind of scary, and this is kind of weird, I feel like I'm, and so she talked about, like I was shocked at how she talked about, I'm a little overwhelmed, I'm a little fearful. I don't know what to do this. next. I don't know what to do next. And, we, and the, again, she's got the set on, you can see it on the screen. And, but here's the, the thing that just like the people in the room were not people she knew. We were visitors. Right. We and wouldn't even speak her language. I know. And you, and she was speaking English and you said, well, click on, click on that. What click would on happen the menu. if you would what click would happen on? if you click on the menu? And she was like, I don't know. I'll try that. And, but there was just this interaction of trust of nobody's trying to, you know, make her do like do something right. to make her look silly or whatever. And I thought that is, that takes a lot of trust when you, 
Me, and by the way, I forgot to mention, did you see the billiards table there? Yes, and the foosball tables. And the foosball tables were in every school in the in what I would call a commons area, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, because I, I had walked down and I saw this young man playing billiards and I thought, isn't that a lovely way to say, I, I just need to do this for five minutes or I don't know, maybe he, he was, I don't know, but it was lovely. It was absolutely lovely. And the that the girl, you know, 15, 16 years old, like, she also, it's like, I'm going to work with, I'm going to work with plants, I'm going to work in ag agriculture. Mm -hmm. And she was learning the, the whole process mm -hmm. of, um, you know, harvesting seeds, um, planting, weeding, uh, harvesting the, um, the end results, preparing them into food, to the mm -hmm. extent that they were prepared into, into food. Um, and uh, she, uh, at, at 16 years old, and again, as a you know, developmental needs, she was already interning with companies, and she mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, when she graduates in another year or so, um, she'll have a job waiting for her. Yeah, and she, it wasn't, and it, it, it I mean, she wasn't the exception. She was not the exception. She no, was not the exception. Every she was every kid, you know. And there, what I loved is, at one point, we went into the other room to look at the smart board and some of the technology, and they helped me hook it up to like you can have have it hooked up to your phone, and they were helping me. But what I loved is, they pulled up a, a like a vocabulary game, and it looked a lot like Wordle. Right. But my favorite thing is, this young man um, gets up there. And you've got all these adults engaging and we're all screaming at him, no, try this word, no, try this word. And at one point he's like, I can't even hear all of you people. Like, it's almost like a basketball right. sport. Right, why are, you act, why are you reacting like kids, yeah. you know? Like, no, no, there's turn. no R, there's no R, <laughs> there's a T. And, and it just er, all these adults that this poor kid doesn't even know, get, get engaged, they get engaged in this game. And at one point he's like, I can't, I can't even tell what you people are screaming. Right, like, he was, took control over he the whole was, room. He did take a trip, and it, and so here's this kid that doesn't know us, speaks excellent English again, and developmentally need. You and, know, yep, he's right? there, and he is just managing. Okay, can, can I tell you my favorite part? No, my I want okay, to tell you my. You. Okay, I just have to tell you this because it cracks me up. We're sitting, so we get invited to sit with coffee and and um, have some in the executive building, the exec, yeah, which is a two hundred year old 200 house, year, and that alone was yeah. amazing, but. Um, we're sitting there and the two kids, I sat with the two kids. And so I got to meet this other young man. And again, these are, you know, they're there. Oh, by the way, they live there all week and go home on the weekend. But one of the things I said to him is, do you not, do you not drive? I mean, the young lady was 16. He was 18. Mm. And I said, do you, do you not drive? And he goes, oh, I drive. I drive a tractor. And I said, like in my life where I live, I have a lot of farms and kids do learn to drive tractors, younger mm -hmm. kids. You know, not it's right. not unusual, to, but but we have it farms. We're in the middle of this community, and I said to him, "You you drive a tractor, but not a car." He goes, "Yeah." I said, "What is the advantage of driving it?" And he showed me his tractor's license. What what's that about? And he said, "And what I love is they just trust you." I'm not trying to make fun of his culture. I really want to know. And I said, are you talking about like a tractor tractor? Like the tra like what I would call it? Because sometimes the language really, doesn't. Language, yeah. right. And I'm thinking there's got to be a language mm -hmm. flip. And he's like, no. He said, you know, those yellow tractors. And I'm like, the ones, and he goes, yeah, they go slower and they have bigger wheels. And I said, okay. And why do we have a tractor's license? He said, oh, because we have a fleet of tractors over there. And they let the kids, you know, drive around the, the campus or whatever and and I, I just thought, <laughs> okay, that's that is amazing. Yeah. Like, I can't drive a tractor. I don't know. Maybe mm. you drive a tractor. Um, I have driven a tractor, but I don't have a tractor's license. No one's ever let me drive a tractor, mm. man. And that's why. I well, I don't him. blame them. Well, I don't either. But <laughs> I want. I said to him, okay, maybe we could go. And then he said, okay, if you ever come back, I'll take you out on a tractor. Mm. I said, okay, because I'm thinking. Anyway, I just. And they took our email addresses in I case know. we no, in case we visit the U.S. Can we have your we email address so we can US. contact you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so if you were, to, you know, what would you say would be the biggest things that you took away from these three days? The biggest thing I took away was the the building a community of trust, and we all know this in our head but I don't think we know how to do that or we don't always aren't successful at it. The fact that there's no teacher evaluation, thank you. 
the fact that you're just trusting these people to know what they're doing the administration they trust the teachers the teachers trust the students there's this big huge system of trust mm -hmm. right and they are a growth mindset system where you know one of my favorite things too is when we went into the building and you've got what were they second graders yeah in the first in the first class or the, no, second, the second second you're right where they're right, walking the first around with computers in a room yep. they're gonna they're working graders, on their project first they were first graders walking around doing their projects and not a single person was told where to sit how to sit what to, they all knew and when they needed help they just i mean it was just this thing where i want to sit with mitch today or i want to sit over here today and no one they were just comfortable in that space. and if one kid had a problem she or he would first go to another kid to see if somebody else yeah. had encountered that and they could solve it and uh if they if they went to two or three kids and nobody could solve the yeah. problem with them then they would go to yeah an adult. and then the other miracle the other miracle is in well in the buildings i've been in mm -hmm. and again i'm not trying to be negative about our system you have kids line up on the right walk on the left or whatever they do and they walk down the hall like that there was none of that it was just get down and there were no kids i mean they were playful but mm -hmm. they the kids weren't like even at lunch when we yeah. were offered to go to lunch the kids just knew how to do that and they just i mean they were chattering and talking but they were not it was pretty they were just calm. being kids they were just, it was pretty being calm, calm in that, kids. In that right. cafeteria yeah like you and i were walking down and i know i'm thinking i can hear him and you know anyway i just think it is less about control and more about growth right and trust and these things that i wish every school every school had yeah i think for me one of the one of the big moments was um there was one i think teacher but it might have been an administrator who had a program where kids were going to be supporting uh, teachers in technology, and in order to become ver oh, it was in it, it was it was coding, and in order to become versed in the technology, uh, the kids had to go through like a two week or a three week program, and he started off with twenty kids going through the program, uh -huh. and he's and he's showing what, you know what happened. And at the end of the three weeks, then the kids were going to start supporting teachers and start supporting other kids and training other kids and how to be mentors. So you start off with 20 kids. Three to four weeks later, the kids who were starting to be mentors, it had gone down to four from 20. And then those four then trained and the, over the next couple of months, another five or six. And now two years into the program, there's like 50 or 60 kids who can be mentors and they're training another 40 or 50 kids to be mentors and they're supporting um a, a, a few hundred teachers and then and and given if it's a few hundred teachers multiply that by 20 30 kids that, that's how many kids and so you know he's presenting all this data and i was the one who actually raised the question and i said well this is really you know I, this is a great program and it's showing tremendous growth and it's giving ownership to the kids if this were in many of our countries and we started off with 20 kids in the program and at the end of four weeks there were four kids who progressed someone would say this program has failed and stop it but that's that doesn't that. seem to be yeah. the, the it didn't story fail here. for those four kids right and it really didn't fail for and, the system and he was saying no we had we had the idea that we we knew not this wasn't going to be for all kids we knew that some kids uh weren't going to weren't going to really enjoy the coding some cer certain kids were going to find other interests and um and our our thoughts were we're going to try this for a year or two and we're going to see what what grows and so the first couple steps were just how you know maybe we should maybe the kid the way that we let the kids into the program was wrong maybe the way we we created the program needed to be t tweaked a little bit but we were using that as feedback and over time, you know, it turns out that, that we were right. And it's just, that seemed to be the whole mindset of how schools and society is run here. Um, that um, you start off with some general goals, you may change the goals uh, over, over time, or you may not. Um, and an initial results are merely results to get feedback, not results that say, oh, if you don't achieve this, you failed and, and, and yeah. stop. And that was, that seems to be permeating throughout the society. So that was number one. 
And the other thing was was the attitude that, you know, every single person in Finland is a human being, and we value that human being, and we believe that we need to make sure that that human being has the has the opportunity to also contribute to society mm -hmm. um, and to live f a fulfilling life, mm -hmm. and um, and. So the goal of school and the goal of society is to support that aim of allowing every person in the entire country to mm -hmm. find what's satisfying to them and whatever it takes. If a some, somebody is 30, 35 years old and decides, I want to go back to university, we will pay for the university and we will give them a stipend while they attend the university so that they can afford to live and and. and and go to classes yeah. so that they can find the things where they can So contribute. education is free. All education All is free. All education is free. And right. by the way, the lunches, free. Yeah. Kids can go, I mean, right? There's no paying for mm -hmm. food. Right. So it, it's just a yeah. right in this country. Those yeah. are really um, some of the things. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that, you know, hopefully there's uh, other people who went uh, on, on our excursion will, will also do. Um, videos. Each one of us has things that we are planning to do when we come back. Mm -hmm. And interesting enough, the two uh, individuals from Portugal have said, "Well, you know something. In May, we can we can host you all to come to Portugal, and we can we can t talk to and visit Portuguese schools and Portuguese universities and um, Portuguese departments of, of education." And we can do this comparison and see what we can continue to learn from each other. Right. And then the woman from India, uh, Vrishali, oh. you know, she said we could, well, she was fantastic, right? Yeah, she was um, lovely. Actually, everybody was fantastic. I shouldn't just yeah. signal, signal her. But, and she was lovely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she offered uh, to do uh, something similar in, in India. And the person from, um, uh, from Scotland volunteered to help us do something in Scotland. So we, we have a, a, you know, a few more of these plans so that we can continue to explore and continue yeah. to kind of figure out uh, and how we can make other. and learn yeah. from each other and, yeah. and, and, and nobody, impact our and own I love that about the group. Like I didn't think anybody went in as a, a you know, in a negative way saying, right. you know, we're, and, or, and, and yes, I think there was some comparative of systems, but I don't think it was a comparison to negate anyone's work but to rather say oh how do we build this better how right. can we do better how can we do better together right right mm -hmm. yeah and understand you know so and and i think we all feel very often in our in our own countries that you know we're battling to try to make our systems support people and sometimes mm -hmm. we feel in our own countries and our own uh, organizations that were hitting our head against the wall. And it was just so nice to find people, you know, all of us, all, all 13 of us, first of all, in accord, and second of all, um, in a society that basically shows us it can be done. Exactly, that's yeah. exactly, and, and I think I think that was the powerful takeaway, look what can be done. And I, and I what I loved is, it, would they talk, we talked about 21st century skills, and mm -hmm. somebody said really, these skills have been around a long time, and somebody called them human skills. And I thought, I would love to go back to the United States and start calling them human skills. I, I will get a crap ton of pushback, by the way. But um, but that's really what they are. Yep. Communication, collaboration, you know, Critical creati thinking. creativity, critical thinking. I mean, anyway. Yeah. It was, it's been a lovely visit. It's been wonderful. So uh, I, hope, I hope everybody finds this interesting. Yeah. And... Um, you can more interviews to come more interviews to come more interviews to come okay take care bye